Hi everyone, thanks for joining and welcome to the FreeWave webinar on accelerating smart ag adoption with the right edge. My name is Greg Corey and I'm the Director of Support for FreeWave and I will be your host for the webinar today. To kick this discussion off, let's talk about why it's time to evolve. So smart ag is going to be necessary moving into the future for a number of reasons. The primary driver of smart agriculture is the need to feed an increasing number of people on Earth. So Earth's population is now over 7 billion people. We have traditional farming areas that may not serve that number of people. We have weather patterns that are changing and so on. And due to these factors, we're going to need to increase food yields by 60% by 2030 in order to keep up with global demand. So new challenges are going to require new approaches with technology and how we leverage those technology solutions in order to increase crop outputs. Along with these driving factors are going to be an uptick in the associated markets for these types of businesses. In the industrial IIoT, industrial internet of things space, we expect the global market for agriculture to increase to over $20 billion by 2022. The revolution in the industrial internet of things or IIoT will also bring other benefits to the ag space. We're gonna be able to reduce agrochemical use by 90%. We're gonna be able to reduce the amount of labor required for some of these agricultural processes. And we're gonna be able to produce more and save money by leveraging technology. Moving on to the right-hand side of the screen here in precision applications. When we're conserving water and applying only the right amount of petrochemicals we need, we'll also be saving money and being able to sell more evolved solutions. For all of these reasons, in the next 50 years or so, it is going to be really important in how we leverage technology, specifically in the agricultural space. In moving in this direction, there are also some key challenges. And the key challenges to embracing smart ag are number one, having a reliable internet connection in some of these rural areas. A lot of the cloud-based solutions we're going to discuss here may require internet connectivity. So even if we can get data points off specific points in the field, we need a reliable internet connection in order to publish that data to the cloud to be accessible by a number of different sources. The second challenge is the lack of interoperability across different platforms. And we'll talk about this a little bit later in the presentation here. The agricultural uh, smart ag market is very siloed in that there is a specific platform for each type of technology, and there really isn't true integration across these platforms. Somebody will have to look at an irrigation system specifically for water, Feed management is done through another software package. And any time that we have to jump around and to look at these different data points, we lose efficiency and visibility. Lastly here are, we still have data points that are trapped in the field. So there are insights that we could gain about agricultural processes, but due to the location of that data, it is not readily accessible. And FreeWave solutions can address a lot of these problems here, and we're gonna be talking about them as we go through this presentation. To start that discussion about data points in the field, specifically agricultural operations, let's talk about what we're currently getting today. So we're getting some basic data from field sensors and different devices and those data points include, is the system currently running? So that's a, a very simple, straightforward question. Is something on or off? Is a motor running, yes or no? Is a pump on or off? We're getting those data points today. 
We can also look at when was the last watering. So for running an irrigation system, we can tell the last time that relay was activated, for example, and we can tell how long that system has been running. Using a couple of different sensors, we can also look at data points such as, should I turn the system off or how much water has been placed in this area? These three data points here are fairly straightforward and a lot of agricultural operations have been getting uh, these types of data points for a long time, but it's estimated that there is still 80 to 95% of our data points trapped in the field that we are not able to collect for some reason. And FreeWave solutions help bridge the gap between cloud services, field sensors, and field devices. By eliminating this connectivity gap, we're able to retrieve more data from the field and make better decisions. Taking a look here into the future, this is what we could be getting in these operational environments. We could ask who calibrated a system. So there could be a specific, if we're seeing a high number of failures with a specific type of device that was installed, we can look at a data tag is, well, who calibrated this or who installed this specific part? Maybe that person requires further training. Other departments may ask things like as, how long has this system been in use? So every hardware system has a standard lifetime or life expectancy, and we need to be able to budget and look ahead into the future for how long this hardware is going to last us in the field. Other departments might ask, when was the system last tested? So how do we know that we have a safe and functional system? We can have a data point for that. On the other side of things here, we could ask, is the system secure? So security is becoming a focal point in a lot of operations, especially when we start connecting things to the cloud. Ability to networks that were previously completely separate from the internet as we know it. So security is going to be a big aspect and how we audit and what visibility we have there. Looking into kind of the predictive model, you could also ask, is there rain in the forecast? So that could be a specific data point where we pull data from a, uh, a weather station somewhere, and if there is rain in the forecast, maybe we don't water for that day. It's all about making better decisions by having more data points available. When we have these data points enabled and we bridge the gap with using wireless connectivity from FreeWave, we enable predictive maintenance, predictive analytics, and also process optimization. Starting with preventative maintenance there, we can look at the amount of time that a part or a device has been in the field, how often it's been used, and if there's going to be any maintenance due to past failures of that part. For example here, if we have a plow roller that has been shown to fail on average after 22 runs, we know that we're gonna need to arrange a service technician to look at that device after about 20 runs. So we're gonna get ahead of the game. We're not gonna let that part fail where we're right in the middle of harvest season or some other crucial time. And we're gonna be able to keep the system operational through that preventative maintenance. Also, predictive analytics. So in this example, we have an engine and a tractor that vibrates this specific amount. It decreases efficiency. We know that we can send out a technician to look at that. So not only looking into the future with preventative maintenance, but also looking at something that's going on now and how that's gonna impact our operational efficiency. Lastly here in process optimization, so if we have a soil sensor and that was installed by a specific technician and we see that a lot of them are malfunctioning, we can then run a report to say who installed what sensor and what was the failure rate of that sensor. Using that data, we can then maybe schedule training or uh, other 
educational avenues to help build our team in order to make them competent in the installation of that sensor. Taking a look here at the big picture in precision agriculture, it's all about these three key points. So improving operational visibility, enabling command and control, and automation. These three points, visibility, command and control, and automation are going to empower the future of Smart Ag. We're gonna eke out operational inefficiency to be able to make better decisions, and we're gonna be able to make decisions quicker. And some of the data points that we use to enable these benefits are remote tank monitoring, for example. So we can look at the amount of fluid in a tank there. If it's about to overflow, we'll know about it. If it's a feed tank, a water tank, and it's low, we'll know we need to go refill it. We can also do precision steering with RTK. So free wave radios and solutions can provide the connectivity for GPS in order to precisely steer tractors within a couple inches of tolerance or even greater tolerance than that. It enables uh, precision fertilizing. So we're only putting down the specific amount of fertilizer required, and that's based on a number of data factors that we're able to obtain from the field. When we automate irrigation, we're only going to use the amount of water we need. We're going to base that delivery of water on uh, moisture, soil sensors, and also weather reports there. All of these data points we're looking at here are what power Smart Ag and the decisions we're going to make. In looking at the intelligent edge, so it's not just connectivity anymore to these specific types of devices, it's having intelligence at the edge. Radio market has been around for a long time and historically industrial radios have sent and received data from field. Looking into the future of Smart Ag and the future of FreeWave, it's all about taking that device that radio that we already have at the edge of the network and making it intelligent. Have it be able to host software, to analyze data points, and to make decisions at the edge of the network. This is important in future proofing solutions. So if you're buying a communications network for an operational application like we've been talking about, you don't want to buy a device that has no future capability. In today's world, everything is about software. Hardware is becoming more of a commodity. Hardware is inexpensive now. There's lots of different vendors out there. But software is what really sets hardware apart nowadays. And with FreeWave's Intelligent Edge platform, we can now run software on our hardware in order to bring all of these processes to the edge of the network and not have them require specific connectivity to computers or other pieces of software that are centralized. There's a lot of things that can be done at the edge and then we only take the small amount of data we need and publish it to the cloud. How we do this is by offering a ruggedized machine-to-machine -machine wireless solution. So FreeWave has been in the industrial radio business for over 26 years. We offer enclosed radios, board level radios, OEM style radios, and in our complete product for portfolio, we have a number of different frequencies so we can be used worldwide. No matter what the application is, the market or the environment, FreeWave has a solution in the product portfolio for that. And just a sampling here that we're looking at of the frequencies available, 900 megahertz is commonly used in the US and Canada. We also have a licensed radio in the 455 space and also 1.4 gigahertz. And lastly but not leastly, 
We also offer a 2.4 gigahertz radio that is used in a lot of different international locations. These are tried and true industrial radios. They go through an extensive uh, quality control process. Everything that FreeWave builds is designed and manufactured right here in Boulder, Colorado. In building onto our story of an industrial radio platform, we now have intelligence at the edge. So as I mentioned earlier, it's not just a device that sends and receives data over a wireless connection. It's an actual platform that can host applications and something that can future-proof your current deployments there. The best analogy to describe the intelligent edge radio is that when mobile phones first became prevalent, we only used mobile phones for sending and receiving calls or sending and receiving text messages. As phones have evolved, they've cannibalized many other hardware devices in our lives. So MP3 players, digital cameras, GPS navigation, the smartphone has replaced all of that hardware because it's all about the software that you leverage on hardware in today's world of technology. So FreeWave is taking the same approach to the industrial radio space. It's not just a radio, it's a smart radio. And it's all about how we leverage applications on that communication device to offer real world value in many different vertical industries. And we do that through our IQ application environment. So with IQ, you can access a Linux-based operating system that runs on the radio, and that will allow you to code, deploy, and run applications on Linux at the edge of your network. The big picture in what we're talking about here is a true edge ecosystem. And in this diagram we're looking at here, there are two different flavors of FreeWave products. So, so far in this conversation, we focused mainly on the radio connectivity aspect. So that is the Zoom Link radio, and it also can run the IQ environment, giving you the best of both worlds and a future-proof solution. On the left-hand side of this slide here, we have Zoom IQ itself. So this is an industrial computing device without the wireless connectivity. So depending on your application, if you want an industrial edge computer, FreeWave has a product for that. We also have a product that extends the uh, value with long-range connectivity there. At the bottom, we have our edge sensing. So FreeWave also uh, offers products that can be connected to sensors, um, products that are sensors themselves, and those all can be integrated with the Zoom IQ and the Zoom Link platform. Lastly here, in the application environment, there are a number of different software packages that you can run in the IQ environment. Uh, Node Red is a commonly used, uh, we'll say, development platform for connecting IoT or Internet of Things applications. Node Red allows you to graphically create a flow based program. Um, I myself is, have used Node Red to uh, test ideas out or to rapidly prototype, and that is something that is supported in the Zoom IQ platform. We can also run Ignition Edge. So for those people out there that are might be familiar with inductive automation, which is a major industrial software platform, we can run the Ignition Edge version of that software right on our radio at the edge of a network. We also have a partnership with Autosol. And Autosol is a company that is widely known in the oil and gas space. They do protocol conversions where they can talk to 
any industrial device, regardless of protocol, and then convert that information to MQTT. For those of you that are not familiar with MQTT, or Message Query Telemetry Transport, that doesn't roll off the tongue very easily, but uh, it adds a ton of value in industrial networks in that it allows us to break down those silos or barriers that we spoke about with different software platforms. MQTT is an open standard, and it is a published protocol instead of pull response. In a traditional industrial pull response network, we send out a request of a device and that device responds. With MQTT in AutoSol or Ignition Edge at the edge of our network, we can interrogate that industrial device directly and then only publish data when certain criteria is met. And using that method, we can conserve throughput on these low throughput networks. At the edge of networks, usually the networking equipment um, is not going to be microwave, it's not going to be Wi-Fi, it's gonna be lower bandwidth stuff that goes a much larger distance. So for last mile connectivity scenarios, we wanna ensure that we're using our throughput wisely, and by using this entire ecosystem, we can ensure that we have a future-proof and scalable solution. Taking a look here at the before and after. So this is a traditional industrial network where we're pulling a number of different data points from the field into a centralized location. And then maybe we have that connected to a backhaul to an office. And then within that network, there might be several different computers that are accessing that data. When we add a free wave solution here, we now have an industrial internet of things gateway radio. In the field, we have other ZoomLink radios, and from the edge, we're publishing data only when it meets specific criteria, whether it be if that value changes, if it's below or above a certain amount. Um, we're analyzing that data at the edge and only publishing it when that criteria is met. When that data is received to the gateway radio, we can then publish that to the cloud. So FreeWave has a number of partners in the cloud and a number of tools that can be deployed on ZoomLink radios to easily integrate with the cloud to provide that seamless end-to-end -end connection for industrial devices. And taking a look here, we're just going to advance to the next slide. In the OT cloud or operational technology cloud, we're now able to do analytics, reporting, we're able to integrate older devices using protocol conversions. It's all, this is the big picture and the end-to-end -end solution of where integrating all of those data points, regardless of where they're located, regardless of what device it is in the field, available in the cloud for anybody to be able to access given the correct permissions there. So why are these solutions needed? And we've already touched on this a little bit there. By pushing data decision-making to the edge, we are freeing up bandwidth on these lower bandwidth or through lower throughput networks. When we do pull response into event-based things, we decrease our latency and we optimize bandwidth. So the more bandwidth we can conserve on these low bandwidth networks, the more applications that are opened up to us because now we have available capacity on that network. Many of our customers are now wanting to do some sort of video and run video analytics at the edge, and we have solutions for that. And this really allows us to enable those decisions, make them quicker, make them more actionable, and not rely so much on central processing. Other reasons why these solutions are needed are the interoperability aspect. 
So we touched on that a little bit in the beginning of the presentation here. A lot of software vendors and their associated hardware is currently siloed off in that there isn't a lot of interoperability. When we convert industrial data to a protocol like MQTT, we are making that data available in an open standard that a number of different software and web services support. So we're breaking down those silos, we're using a more open standard, and we're able to more easily exchange data between services there. In creating data transparency, we're now allowing greater visibility to that data. So no longer is it sitting on a PC that may be out in a shack in the middle of nowhere. It is available from the boardroom, from your service truck, or from your smartphone when you're on vacation. Having that data in a centralized cloud location allows everybody to have visibility as long as they've been given the correct access there. Lastly in this slide is that all of these things combine enable new business models. So it enables companies to write for algorithms to improve these processes. It enables software as a service type companies. It enables consultants to custom tailor a solution for these new smart edge networks. There are many different other types of business opportunities that are going to be created by the push to this type of technology. In enabling the intelligent edge, this essentially summarizes everything we've been talking about so far. We can solve our challenges and act on our opportunities. And the specific points about this include automation, making immediate real-time changes, so we're not losing any time if, let's say, a pipe has burst and we need to send that data back in order to make a decision if we should turn it on or off. We can, in real time, turn that line off to ensure that we're not losing water. We're not waiting for that decision to be made. When we create a framework of interoperability, as I mentioned, we break down those silos. We allow data to be more visible to more people within the organization. And we can derive value from big data without overburdening the network. So the term big data is in conjunction with the industrial internet of things or just the plain internet of things. The more data we have available, typically the greater pipe you need to move that data. But by using the smart applications like MQTT, we can have more data from the field, but not overburden the network by sending data that we don't need or data that hasn't changed in the last 10 minutes, for example. All right, we're going to switch gears here for the last segment of our presentation. We're going to talk about some use cases. So here's a real return on investment for a large citrus orchard in Florida. So we have over 3,000 acres, and they were running an irrigation system based on a simple So there's a timer that runs, and it waters at specific points throughout the day. To improve that solution and to add that intelligence to it, we combined looking at soil sensor data, bringing that into a ZoomLink radio with IQ, and then only watering there when the soil moisture drops. So we're not just doing it based on the same time every day. We're remotely retrieving that soil sensor data, looking at the moisture, and then only applying where necessary. And simply by saving water, we can save a lot of money in those scenarios. Water is becoming more and more precious in a lot of different types of environments, and the more we can conserve, the less money we have to spend. The second use case here 
was a leading international agribusiness focused on grain production and processing. And the problem that this company faced was they were looking to make their fertilizing practices more efficient in order to reduce the amount of chemicals they needed. And the way this was solved was by using an RTK triangulation, so traditional GPS improved by uh, ground stations there to get the accuracy even further, and to be able to remotely steer that tractor so we're precisely applying that chemical only where we need it. And it allowed us to do eight rows easily, and it reduced the use of chemicals by 90%. So it wasn't simply an on or off scenario. We're robotically steering that tractor and only applying coverage when and where necessary. Presentation here today, why choose FreeWave? As I mentioned earlier, FreeWave has been around for over 26 years. We're deployed in environments all over the world. Uh, we have the entire temperature range covered, whether you're in Saudi Arabia in the summertime or in the wintertime. FreeWave has been proven in the full spectrum of environments. We're long range, low power. As I mentioned, there's some great distances involved with collecting a lot of this sensor data. It's important to have a long range, flexible solution that doesn't draw a lot of power. We have applications that operate in the Arctic where solar is an issue due to the amount of darkness per year, where they will run on uh, wind generated power and only power on for certain points in the day in order to collect their data. FreeWave has built products around low power capability because we know that's important in a lot of our applications. FreeWave is a tried and true industrial radio company, and moving into the future, FreeWave is going to be the smart radio of radio manufacturers. It's no longer just about the hardware, it's about how you leverage software on that hardware and how you interconnect with other web-based services. In looking at FreeWave for specifically for smart agriculture, a lot of attention there, the FreeWave track record, how we're evolving the edge platform. One thing that we haven't touched on is our best in class support. So I myself being the director of support for FreeWave, we take customer support seriously. We know that downtime in our customer networks can cause operational issues, it can cause safety issues, and it can cost companies a lot of money. When you call into FreeWave, we on average answer the phone within 30 seconds, and we have technicians standing by ready to support you in any problems that you face. Industrial grade devices, we've mentioned that. So FreeWave did not get its start in making consumer devices. We've always had tough customers with tough applications that required something a little bit more industrial grade than a standard uh, access point per se that you would buy at Best Buy. Lastly here, uh, why FreeWave for Smart Ag is the future proofing. So there are many different hardware vendors out there today offering machine to machine connectivity solutions. There's a lot of those hardware platforms that are not future proof in that they will not allow you to put software on there. Buying just a radio brick, it will never be more than a radio. FreeWave ZoomLink product can be more than a radio. It can be a complete edge ecosystem solution for the networks of tomorrow. At this point, I'm going to conclude the webinar here. I want